Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the different parts of the blood and then state their functions. You should then be able to describe the uses of blood products and state the risks of these. This shows a picture of human blood under a microscope. There are four important parts that you need to know. First we've got blood plasma. Plasma is the liquid part of the blood. In the plasma we find two different types of blood cells. These are red blood cells and white blood cells. We also find tiny fragments of cells and these are called platelets. So we're going to look at the functions of the different parts of the blood and you need to learn these. We're going to start with the blood plasma. Now as we said, plasma is the liquid part of the blood and its job is to transport dissolved substances around the body. Plasma transports soluble digestion products, for example glucose, from the small intestine to other organs. Plasma transports carbon dioxide from the body cells to the lungs to be breathed out. And remember that carbon dioxide is produced by aerobic respiration. Lastly, plasma transports the waste product urea from the liver to the kidneys to be excreted in urine. OK, let's look now at red blood cells. Red blood cells transport oxygen from the lungs to the body cells. And to do this, they've got three adaptations. Firstly, red blood cells contain the oxygen-carrying molecule haemoglobin. Haemoglobin combines with oxygen in the lungs, forming the molecule oxyhemoglobin like this. The red blood cells then travel to the organs where the oxyhemoglobin releases the oxygen, and I'm showing that here. Secondly, red blood cells have got no nucleus, which means they've got more room for haemoglobin. And lastly, red blood cells have got this shape. In the centre of the cell there are dimples. Scientists call this shape a biconcave disc. This shape gives the red blood cells a greater surface area, so oxygen diffuses in and out rapidly. OK, let's take a look now at white blood cells. White blood cells form part of the immune system, for example making antibodies. And we're going to take a closer look at that in a later video. Now the key feature of white blood cells is that they contain a nucleus. This contains DNA, which encodes the instructions that the white blood cells need to do their job. OK, so the final part of blood are platelets, and I'm showing those here. Platelets are tiny fragments of cells, and their job is to help the blood to clot. It's important that you learn that. Now, lots of people are blood donors, and donated blood has many uses in medicine. For example, it's used to replace blood loss during injury. Some people are given platelets extracted from blood to help in clotting. And proteins extracted from blood can also be useful, for example antibodies. There are a couple of problems with using products from blood. Firstly, in a blood transfusion, we have to make sure that the donated blood is the same blood type as the patient's. Otherwise the body's immune system will reject the blood and the patient could die. Secondly, there's the risk from infection. Lots of different diseases can be transmitted via blood. However, I should point out that in the UK, blood is screened for infection, so the risk is extremely low. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on blood in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the different parts of the blood and then state their functions. You should then be able to describe the uses of blood products and state the risks of these.